squeezed into a council house in Guernsey lives a woman branded Britain's most prolific single mother. <laughs> jo Watson, a mum of 14, whose family survives largely on state benefits, has become infamous. I was in town one day, they looked at me and they said, look who it is, it's a baby making machine. I just glared at them, just all of them. This is the way I am. Welcome to the Watsons. You get up! It's 7 a.m. and the morning rush is about to start. Don't know, just really had a whole dream. Jo separated from her husband two years ago. Now the responsibility of supporting her kids and getting them ready for school is solely down to her. Can you stop mocking about, please? With a little help from Georgia, her 15-year-old daughter. Tell how I, like, get the screen comes out and lunch boxes. Charlie. Finally, everyone's ready to go. Almost. Oh, and you've got your trousers the wrong way. Hurry up, Mum. Come, Mum. You can go to the step. No, I said get your shoes on right now. Family life for Joe wasn't always like this. For 20 years, she was married to John, the father of all 14 of her children. He always said he wanted a lot of kids for the way he was brought up, because he said he didn't have a good background. I was in love with him then, eh? The Watsons didn't always fit the stereotype of a big family. They weren't on benefits. All the kids were beautiful, blonde and immaculately turned out. To cap it all, Jo had a figure that any woman, let alone one who'd had so many kids, would die for. I mean, people think that I'm big-headed and, oh, look at the size she is, but it's the way I am. I mean, it's not my fault roughly a week after I can get into my normal jeans. It's just the way I am. <laughs> Sometimes holiday makers would like to see all my kids in a line when I was much younger, like when I, when I first went in the paper, and they would like, ask so they could take a picture. Being the press's darling big family earned the Watsons thousands. But as papers clamoured to get the story of the birth of their 14th baby, Joe wasn't prepared to play happy families in the public eye anymore. <laughs> Daily Mirror, I think it was. And I refused to do it. I do it. Because my husband had phoned them up and I said, no, I'm not prepared to go and sit and advertise like with some happy family. It's not right. And I wouldn't do it. Joe's marriage was crumbling. I just couldn't take no more. The way we were arguing. I didn't want my children to hear it anymore. And one day, I just did it, put all these clothes together, and I just said, got to get out. Revelations were about to cast an even darker light on the illusion of the perfect big family. The Hamlins, a family of 12 in Yorkshire, live close to the breadline. They survive on a modest carer's wage, but apart from child benefit, refuse to claim state handouts. Financially, we ain't got a secret millionaire living in a cellar. You know, it doesn't happen. We're just normal. We just know how to budget, we know how to survive, because we've always had to. As far as I'm concerned, you can keep your money. And do you know what? I'd rather be skinned and have my kids than have all the money in the world. This is the Hamlin family. Get on! Off to do the weekly shop. Lee's found a novel way of cutting costs. Morning, Lee. I've just come to pick me half a pig up. Right. Take the shoulder off, Lee. Yeah, nah, I don't want Ed. <laughs> we order. Half a pig one week. The following week I'll have a full lamb, and then we'll go back to us half a pig. 
It's a lot cheaper than supermarkets. You're going to pay 20, 25 quid for a leg of lamb. You can buy a full lamb for 85 quid from your local butcher. There's a big family with a big appetite, so I need a big pig to fill them. And what age range are your children with? Oldest one's 19, youngest one's three. Oh, my word. <laughs> You've done your bit for Queen and Country, haven't That's you? That's it, yeah. <laughs> People out there are probably saying, well, how do they do it? No, we didn't just wake up one morning and have 10 kids, our family's progressed. But it just means that we've got to watch the pennies. Despite being expert scrimpers, the family spends £200 a week on food. That includes 84 pints of milk, 21 loaves of bread and 24 toilet rolls. After all the weekly bills, there's not much left from Lee's wage as a carer. We'd like a nice car, we'd like a Jeep. We can't afford it. You know, we'd like other luxuries, but we don't get it. But our kids are our luxuries. Money is tight, but to Emma, having a big family has always been the priority. It was just me, and I used to think, oh, God, I'd love a big sister or a big brother, and I didn't want my children to have nobody. I don't understand people just wanting one child. Emma and Lee may be proud of being a big family, but they're aware that the world sees them differently. When we moved here, everybody and anybody knew we moved here before we even come here, just because we're a big family. It doesn't bother me when people say negative stuff to me, it's when they make stupid comments to my kids. I just feel like we're constantly... We're spending his life proving itself to people. And it shouldn't be like that. Come on. Tea time. We all eat together. That saves a fortune, really, by all eating the same thing. Because if you were all having individual things, we wouldn't be able to afford to do it. How tasty is that? It's, it's, it's meat. Yeah, that. That's where it's attached oh. to Ed. Shut up. You're lucky being fed. Back at the Watsons, birthdays are an expensive business. Single mum Joe has to pay for 14 of them a year. And this is a special birthday. Joe's eldest son Bradley has turned 21 today. Even ex hubby John has joined them for the occasion. Oh, thank you. Who are these, who are these from? Me. Thank you. For two decades, John was seen by the world as a model father. I do feel like pretty sore for what's gone on in the past. I mean, you know, I've been married for 22 years. So it, it, it's been hard, and I've been a good father. I've always been there for them, and I've worked hard for them, and nobody, nobody whatsoever can turn around and say I haven't, because I have. Happy birthday to you. But after an accident, John wasn't able to return to work. Then the pressure of providing for 14 children led to him not declaring income at the same time as claiming benefits. I did get done for benefit fraud, OK? Right, and I paid my punishment. I went to prison and I paid all the money back. I know what he did was wrong, but he wasn't... We weren't doing it to go on holidays and to buy cars and mobile phones. He was doing it to support us. <laughs> the Watsons' publicity bubble had burst. And things were about to get worse. Can we all stay together? A small army of Hamlins are visiting the local fair. But a simple day out can cost a fortune when you have ten kids. Are you ready for this? Do I get a discount for the garden? No. Right, I want 11 cheese and ham toasters and I want 11, uh, 14 cans of pot. They might only be cheap snacks, but multiplied by 12, it soon adds up. When you have these big orders and people either think you're joking or look at me as if you've got two heads or whatever else. The attention isn't always welcome. We turn around and see people giving us dirty looks, talking about us, sniggering, and it's just pathetic because we've done nothing wrong, so why should people do that? People like call us scrubbers and stuff like that just because we're a big family and I don't see the point. 
Proud Emma, whose hard-working family does not rely on handouts, is becoming fed up with the prejudice her family suffers. Same thing goes, doesn't it? Oh, they've got a big family, they must be on dole and they must be on in council houses and stuff, and actually, no, we're not. Sometimes I feel as if I'm ashamed of being me for wanting such a large family. Come on, then, in your bed. There is another reason the children are being singled out. Primary school, they asked me, like, is your mum and dad married or are they, like, split up and stuff like that? Yeah. Everybody asks if mum and dad are married and then I just said, say no. I'd wish mum yeah. and dad got married. You know I'm good at brushing hair, don't you? Cos a lot of times I have to brush mine. <laughs> Very fun. I've got loads of it, it just hides away. Don't let them know they see it except me. When Emma met Lee, she already had four children. Lee has always treated the children as his own, but he's yet to tie the knot with Emma. Night, Licky Licky. Night. Night. Lee has decided to put an end to the playground taunts. Unbeknownst to Emma and the kids, he is planning to pop the question tonight. This is either going to go extremely well, or, and she's going to be in floods of tears, or she's going to be really annoyed that I've done it and not told her. So I don't know which one it's going to be. Seven o'clock tonight, see what happens. Really nervous. I decided we needed to put down his roots officially, should I say. It's needed for us as a family. Not just for me and Emma, but for kids as well. I don't know where we're going. I don't know what what we're doing. All I know is that we're going out for a meal and that's it. And I feel really nervous, like... I could cry, nervous. Beauty, Mason. Oh. Like a princess. <sighs> Behave. about four years since we've been out for a meal. Is it? Yeah. What's up? What's the matter? What's the matter? What's up? No. We need to celebrate because end of this month we're getting married at Whirly Hall. <laughs> yeah? It's happening. So will you marry me at Whirly Hall then, Emma? Yeah, of course I will. I can't believe it. That's brilliant. Thank you. Listen, eh? listen. <laughs> Eager to let the kids know the good news, Lee and Emma dragged them out of bed. I've been keeping a bit of a secret from your mum. Uh, I've been planning our wedding. We're getting married at the end of this month, in about three weeks' time. Now they hope the finger-pointing can finally stop. <laughs> you are you crying for? You cried as well. Are you happy? That was that little one. Dylan was sobbing and I asked him, what on earth's the matter? And he said, you don't realise how happy you've made me. You don't realise what this means. He's happy, aren't you, mate? Of course I will. Whoa. Stop crying. <laughs> <laughs> in Guernsey, in the Watson family home, 15-year-old Georgia is trying to snatch some private time. Hi. I've had enough of you following me. It's so annoying. Yeah. I won't eat them, baby. But it's not long before duty calls, and she helps her mother put the children to bed. You tired, eh? 
nearly nine o'clock. Um, I put in Janet to bed and um, uh, like I bath her, then she gives me like cuddles and kisses, and then I put her into bed and say good night. She's saying all the stuff to me like I love you and like that. Night, Anna. I class her as like my child. Growing up in the Watson family isn't easy. I was like in the newspaper when I was in year four, year three, I think. It's like if an article gets put in the newspaper, everyone talks about it at my school. Have you seen the newspaper? Have you seen the newspaper? I'm just like, yeah, I am in it. Hmm. I'm not going. And then when you go on the like laptop, there's like people talking about you on Facebook. There'll be like over 100 comments bad about you, and like not even one good one. And tag people your friends. One day I went into class, and this boy was like, "Oh, what's the Watson doing here?" And I went, "Well, I go to the school. I have been here since year seven. And he goes, "Yeah, but you shouldn't be here because there's so many of you." We're only really a family, we're like everyone else. Squeezed into this ordinary looking ex council house in Dundee, Scotland, live a family of 14. We got to nine, you know, I thought we were, we're big now, and all of a sudden it was like a, a sudden leap and we were at 12. And now I look at it and, and it almost seems a ridiculous amount, but. We think that families should be. Forever. Welcome to the Han family. The Han family also face prejudice but they are bound together by their Mormon faith. We, we have a big family because we chose to have a big family. Um, we both come from big families and um, loved, you know, I mean, I always wanted to have a lot of kids. I won't be dictated to, you know, you may be able to have one or two. I just wanted that that was a decision I would be able to make myself, that no one would tell me how many I could have. And when I am a mother... But as in other big families, the Han children have had their share of criticism. One of the downsides of being in a big family is the amount of comments, like negative comments you would get from like just people on the street. The hands also share the other big family concern, money. Dad Roy earns £43,000 as a specialist nurse, but with the food bill alone being £1,000 a month, things are still tough. You probably go through seven, eight pints of milk in a day, bread, so 14 loaves of bread, maybe have, you know, 20, 30 bananas coming in at one time and 20, 30 apples, but even that might not even get us through the week. In one meal, we could use seven and a half kilos of potatoes, five dozen eggs. It is huge. It's a huge thing. Thank you. No bother at all. And the costs keep mounting. Gas and electricity is another £200 a month as Emma faces a mountain of washing up to six loads a day. The laundry is horrendous. I think that's really the hardest thing. We try and use the, the, the drying thing outside, but the reality is, I mean, you, you're lucky if you get a couple of loads out wash and dry, but you're running that thing all day. Emma doesn't accept the public criticism that a big family is bad for both the environment and the taxpayer. Not asking for anything off anyone else. <laughs> If six people are in a room with one light bulb, it's the same as one light bulb with one person. And 
there are people who have no children, there are people who have lots of children, and each has their own right to make their decision. I also kind of think there's no old folks homes in India where the families are big and they look after each other. Uh, you know, these people who have no children will need our children to take care of them. Okay, we're going to say a blessing on the food before we eat, okay? Do you want to say the prayer for us, Jonas? Yeah. No. No? Okay, we'll get... Um... Not me. Not me. <laughs> In Yorkshire, Lee Hamlin has promised partner Emma that they will get married in just three weeks, but he's struggling to cover the costs. We did have savings, and uh... A strict budgeter, Lee returns to the butchers to nose out a wedding bargain. What sort of wedding cake are you having? Because we do a fantastic pork pie wedding cake. Honestly, right good. We don't need to have meal then, do we? I can are, you having, are you having the meal? I can down cancel there? Buffy. We can have pie and peas. <laughs> I've just saved myself a grand. Pot pie, wedding cake, bowl of peas, mint sauce on every table. Even though he saved money with a pork pie wedding cake, Lee's last luxury item will have to go. I've got to sell it um, to contribute towards wedding because we need things for wedding, so it's got to go, unfortunately. It's going to be sold. Shit happens, really, isn't it? You know, one of them things. I'm not whinging about it, is he? And it's not only Lee who's having to make sacrifices. If I miss a horse riding lesson, I don't really care about that, as long as I get married. I need some new trainers. They keep saying that they'll buy me some, but so right now, it needs to save up for the wedding. And I really want them to get married, more than the trainers. Back in Guernsey, despite being recently divorced and 40, single mum of 14, Jo Watson, hasn't lost the desire to have even more children. She started a relationship with 34-year-old leisure centre worker, Craig. I was on my own till around 15 months, then I met my boyfriend, Craig. He got me pregnant. The national press were quick to jump on the story and dub boyfriend Craig Britain's bravest man. The doctor said, would you like to know what you're having? And I goes, go on then, tell us. And he said, look, boy, my eyes <laughs> up. These are Billy's memories. And these are his scan pictures. Mum lost um, the baby called Billy. It was like really sad. It's like me and Caitlin we didn't go to school and for like three days because we just stayed at home and like helping because mum can do it. Like they do his little handprint and his, his little feet. Just two weeks later, there was more devastating news. the next day, I couldn't believe what I saw. Disgusting. How I escaped the baby making machine. Do you know, if they think they've hurt me, by everything that they say, by running me down, losing, Holding these little babies in your arms, dying in your arms, that's what hurts. What they're doing to me, that ain't hurt. Slagging me off. In just two weeks, mother of ten, Emma Payne, is marrying long-term partner, Lee. But the wedding was a complete surprise, and she still doesn't have a wedding dress. 
that's too merangi, not merangi, but it's too gypsy wedding-y, if you know what I mean. Really, I want to scream, yeah, I'm getting married! But then I think if I do that, something bad might happen and it all just fall through and I'll look a complete nut of tit, really, so. Hiya, I'm Lee. Hi, Lee. Hiya, John. Nice to meet you. Callum. Where are you, man? Alfie. Hello. It's my best man, Stuart. Do your lads want to try a couple of waistcoats on that and get some ideas for colours then, so. Wow, look at you. Now, do you like it? Is it still Let's Not or is it Bad Man? <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know. I think I need to try some on to it see what, yeah. Ready. <laughs> Obviously, I'm going to wear wellies. With the wedding being done on a shoestring, all the outfits are being hired, right. even Emma's yeah. dress. With five it's bridesmaids good. and five ushers, it still won't are. come cheap. How beautiful are they? Do you like yours? But for Lee and Emma, the wedding is worth like any cost. So it's not just about me and Lee actually getting married, it's actually. Yeah, this family is going to be complete. Emma also hopes it will stop the world looking down on her family. When we get married, I hope people see that we are solid and that we're a family, complete family, and that's that. I just wish people would get past their prejudice and see us through we are. What's wrong with that? You laugh and joke about it, but that looks extremely smart. You want to wear that with Dad at Mum's wedding? I don't like like two people wearing a kilt. <coughs> no, it all needs to be, it only smart. It's just going to look silly. We need, we, it's all about people knowing that we are one family. What Mason's wearing now is what we'll go with. Over in Guernsey, there is little chance of the taunts ending for the Watson children. Ever since Georgia was a little girl, she has been paraded through the press. In the past, her parents have profited, but they can't control what the press say. It can be like really annoying because I just find people are nosy. And um, they're always like, oh, you're in the newspaper, like, why do you have such a big family? And like, why do you do it? You have to be even tougher to be a Watson boy. Oldest Bradley is teaching his seven-year-old brother, Charlie, how to defend himself. Bradley's recently turned professional, so now he gets grief in and out of the ring. If you're, uh, your name's Watson, then it doesn't go down too well. You know people are laughing and behind your back, but they never say anything to your face. You know, it's just your ears are always burning. Okay. Don't like it, but uh, there's, you know, there's nothing you can do, is there? Back at home, Jo is mounting her own comeback. Looking for a good-hearted man. Quite fancy you. How can he say that? 40 years old and 14 kids. She still hasn't given up hope of having her 15th child. But it's not easy. One dating agency point blank refused to have her on their books. She had me in tears, you know. And then she said, uh, I'm not looking down at you and I'm not judging you, but the men that I've got here wouldn't want to date someone that's on state benefits, someone that's got loads of kids, and someone that lives in where I live. George is in charge, but I trust her 100%. I'll scrap for a dance, really. I'm going now, girls. George, you're in charge. And I'm going to phone up and I'm going to the pair to make sure everything's OK. All right? And I've got my mobile on. OK? OK, bye. 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 Is there any men? Is there any decent men out there? Because I don't know. Bye. In 
in Dundee, the hands are paying their own price for having a big family. Clever. Give me a hug. Specialist nurse Roy is about to put in another 12-hour night shift. I have to go to work. I always have to go to work. Why? Because I've got to put the pennies on the table. He works nights at the hospital, so putting the 12 children to bed is down to Emma. Here you kiss. Night, night. night. When I'm at work, I'm gone for 12 hours. It's a long night. She's got the kids all through the night. She's got to settle them down, get them to sleep. Oh, come on. Everyone mind down. Is Eva OK there with you? Yeah. What is it you're watching? I don't know. Should we turn it off? When Roy's working, it can, it can feel like a mountain to climb. And the task is huge. It, it's just a nightmare getting her to bed. It's 10 o'clock, and the kids still aren't in bed. Yeah, I'm going to. Night, night. Nice one, Jonas. Come on, quickly. We're not doing this anymore. It's getting late. You're not doing what you're told. You don't get much sleep because someone's screaming or crying. People don't sleep always where they're supposed to sleep. Finally, all the kids are asleep. Almost. <coughs> Emma has her own personal reasons for wanting a big family. I was only 17 and a half when I found I was um, pregnant and I was 32 weeks pregnant before anyone knew. So, like, decisions were made and the baby was adopted. I don't know how anyone recovers from that kind of experience to have given your child away. And especially when I don't think she probably really even wanted to do that. And I was young. I was, I just turned 18 and I didn't really, um, I don't think I really had a strong voice, and um, and it was it was really really hard. I kind of had promised God that if this had to be, if I had to have her adopted, that please let me be able to have as many children as I wanted. I mean, it's with you every day. You can't ever shake it off. You it's um, it's you get on with life. But, I mean, there'll always be this void that will never, ever go away. You can never replace it and never fill it. Although we have the 12 children, to, to me, I'll always be that I have 13. Get ready. Despite the sacrifices, Emma has no regrets feel really grateful for our future. Money will always be tough and, you know, we'll never have a perfect house and it'll never be tidy enough, clean enough, we'll never have great cars and that. But, oh my goodness, what we have is just amazing. And it's possible that in the future, the Han family could get even bigger. We've never said we're not gonna, this is it. You know, we've just kind of taken it as, you know, we come to a point where now's the time to have another. We could have another child. If, the, if, we get, we, if we are able to, you know, if God lets us have another baby. And... In Guernsey, it turns out there will be a new Watson baby. If you just lie down here. Is baby moving all right? Yeah. Lovely. You are now 35 plus two days. It's all right. But this time, it's not Joe's. On which side do you feel more movements of the baby? Can you say that? Um, yeah. Normally, more side, there. But... Her 16-year-old daughter, Mariah, is seven months pregnant. Feels like. OK, now you can tell me your tummy up again. I wish you all the best. Thank you. See you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.
Well, the day she told me she was pregnant, I was angry. I think any, any parent would be angry. And I just cried my eyes out. Not because I was jealous, because I thought, no, no. Not at that age. It's not right. You don't want that for your daughter. Worse still, the press have found out. 15-year-old daughter, pregnant. But of course, she's on benefits like her mum. Nate says I'm jealous of my, preg of my daughter's pregnancy, yeah? It's just a week before father of 10, Lee, is due to tie the knot. He's on his way to London with his oldest son, Mitch. Come on, mate, because we need to be going soon. Hurry up. Before he and Emma can begin a new chapter in their life, he wants to close the door on a painful part of his past. I left home at a young age. I was, I was 14, 14 and a bit. Didn't tell anybody I was going. I just went. Right, come on, let's go. And just ended up in London. When I first met Lee, it was a complete and utter knobhead. Underneath that knobhead, I could see that he weren't at all like that. And a lot of his persona, really, was actually because of his childhood. I'm it! Let's just say I don't feel that my childhood were like theirs. After Lee ran away to London, he spent the next five years living rough. The experience has made him all the more determined to provide for his kids. It feels weird, really, because I can remember it being busier than this and noisier. But I don't know if it's because I was so young. I'd lost, I'd lost my way in um, hygiene, self-respect, confidence, just... I suppose just general life skills and trusting people. I used to get jealous watching kids walk past with a lollipop. I'd get jealous seeing kids eating an ice cream. It's crazy, isn't it? You don't need to let it bother you. It's a long time ago. It's 25 years ago, Mitch. But if all that wouldn't have happened, Chances are I want to make your mum. Everything happens for a reason. That happened for a reason. I am very protective. Some I don't know whether I'm too protective or whatever, but I just I just like to know my kids are alright, my kids are safe. Let's forget about it now. Huh? Yeah, it's done with. While ever I'm around and I'm breathing, they will be alright. You know, there's nobody will ever hurt any of my kids, never. I won't allow it. Mother of 14, Jo Watson, is about to become a grandmother for the fourth time. 15-year-old daughter, Mariah, is ready to give birth. We're just waiting for things to start, really. Nervous, excited. Ex-husband John has stepped in to help with the kids. He's as excited as Joe about the prospect of a newborn baby. At the moment, I just want this little, uh, want this little man to come out so I can sort of like hold him. Yeah. It's a bit hectic because I've burnt the pizza. <laughs> Having their dad back at home is a painful reminder of when the family was together. Half of the time, like, I wish he came back here, like, just to, like, live. Right, finished? Yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Back at the hospital, the papers are hunting Joe for another story. But this time, she's decided not to play ball. I don't think it's any of your business. We've said, without being rude, that my daughter's having a baby. And this baby is mine and my family's business. Nothing to do with you or anyone else and I don't appreciate people coming to my house trying to get a blimmin' dirty story out of us, cos that's all you've done to us. Why don't you just leave us alone? Yes. 
12 hours later, another Watson is born. Despite all this happened, the divorce, the benefit fraud, the bad press, there is one thing about big family life that Joe will never tire of. It's just the most beautiful feeling in the world. The first cry. And they're just looking at you in your arms. In Yorkshire, it's the day of the wedding, a day that will finally unite the Hamlin family. That was great, didn't it? <laughs> That's brilliant. You can't turn the tide. Yes. Wow. I made these children. The one good thing out of life I've ever done is made these children. It's brilliant. <laughs> Everything is ready. The dresses, the flowers, the kilts, even the pork pie wedding cake. Pass me that drink. Thank you, I need this. <laughs> I'm going to try not to look at Lee because I'll cry, because I am an emotional wreck anyway. But it, the last thing I want to do is cry. Buffy's Sorry. gonna have to be eight o'clock when she stops crying. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he is a brilliant dad. Although I don't tell him. I never I don't tell him, and I should. We're not going to have a reading by Shannon. The little things are the most important things. It's never being to our door dance. Remembering to say I love you. Oh God, more you sorry. Go on, just take a deep breath and start again. Right. My dad's not my biological dad, but he's always been there for me and always been there for his kids. I don't think one could marry anyone better, to be honest. It's not only marrying the right person, it's being the right partner. All that I have, I share with you. All that I have, I share with you. All that I am, I give to you. All that I am, I give to you. In love and in trust. In love and in trust. We're here to make sure that our kids are happy because they didn't ask to be born, we asked them, we, we wanted them here. So by us wanting them here, it's our duty to bring them up to the best of our ability. And it's now my pleasure to declare that you're together as we <laughs> There is no difference whatsoever in having a large family and a small family, you need three things. You need love, you need structure, and you need respect. Congratulations. That concludes today's ceremony, ladies and gentlemen. Mr and Mrs Hamlin will be pleased if you'll join them for drinks and photographs. We're all Hamlins now, instead of one just being odd, like my mum used to be. Oh, look at that! That's my bit. <laughs> Poor pie, anybody? <laughs> and if you're on this side of the bride and groom's turn, we look bit common. Now, I'm fi I finally, after all these years, got the same surname as my kids. <laughs> and that means a lot. That didn't work, did it? Is that it? Oh, that was a lot. <laughs>